All right, good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here this morning. Go ahead and find your way to your seat, and we'll get our service started. All right, well, welcome. It's great to see you all here this morning. We've got another awesome Sunday to worship the Lord together. Um, just want to start off by saying welcome, especially to anyone new here this morning. Uh, we would love to connect with you, and the easiest way that we do that is we have a little green uh, check-in card in the chair pocket in front of you. You can take one of those and fill it out with your contact info on it. Um, and if you bring it to the kiosk after service, we actually have a little gift welcome goodie bag for you, just a way to say hi and welcome you here to the church. If you want to not have to come up to the kiosk and you just want to put it in the offering plate as it goes by, that's great as well. Um, we'd love to give you a call sometime this week and check in with you, answer any questions you have, and just help you get connected here to the church family. So use that card um, for that. You can also use that green card to let us know of any prayer requests you guys have. Uh, we would love to be praying for you and know what's going on in life, and so you can use that to let us know. Um, you can also use that card to let us know of any uh, tangible needs that you have. You have something came up and you have no idea how to handle it or do it. Um, we would love to be a resource to help you out with that. And we have people in the church that like to help out in those things too. So you can use that. Let us know of what needs you have going on and we'll do our best to help you with those things. So uh, a few things to point out in the bulletin this morning. Uh, first off, we have our purple card in there for our country and missionary of the month. Um, our missionary of the month, we'll be talking about a little bit later this morning, is um, Kevin and Annie Rosa uh, down in Belize, and just the Belize ministry is going on down there. So stay tuned, you know, in 15 minutes we'll be highlighting them. We've got a little video to share with you, um, updating what's going on there. On the back side, we have our country of the month. This um, is for the top 10... 50 persecuted countries uh, around the world. Uh, we'd love to be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. And so uh, this month we have Somalia. Um, they are number two on the world watch list for persecution. And so it is um, not easy to, to live by faith um, and to be there. Uh, there's uh, severe persecution going on there. And so we, we should be praying for them. They're our brothers and sisters in Christ and they would love us to be supporting them in prayer. Um, there's different ways that we can be praying for them on there. Uh, so put this in your, your Bible or in your devotional, so it's just that daily reminder that you can be praying for not only our missionaries, but also uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are um, in hard times there. We also have um, the orange flyer in the bulletin there for our Harvest Festival that is coming up on October 31st, and this is um, an event and a ministry that we need all the help we can get. We need the body of Christ, the family of God to come together uh, to help with this event and to be a blessing and, and an outreach to our community, and it's going to be here at the church this year. We're going to do the whole event here, um, and so we uh, will be doing that on Thursday, October 31st from 3 to 6 p.m., and so we will need uh, help setting up with that. Um, we'll need help running the different games and stations that we have. Um, and then we'll also need help um, getting everything set back up on Saturday afternoon. Um, we're delaying the setup of everything again because we have um, Operation Christmas Child Packing Party after the Harvest Festival. There's a lot of things happening all at once kind of around that time. Um, so Saturday afternoon is going to be the time where we come back and set up the sanctuary and whatnot for that. And we also need candy. We need candy to hand out to all the kids coming uh, for that event. So um, however you can help out with that, please fill this out and let us know. Put it in the offering plate as it goes by. If you have any questions about it, you can come talk to myself or to Matt or to Kim, um, and we can answer those for you. Some other things to point out in the bulletin. We are back uh, full swing with our Wednesday night programs and activities. Uh, that started back up this last Wednesday. Um, and that all starts with, uh, we have a dinner. We want to host a dinner for you guys to make it easy as possible to come and be in Bible study together. And so we start off with a dinner at 5 o'clock, and I did not get the meal this week. Does anyone know the meal for Wednesday? Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs. A nice, hearty, good meal for you guys there to enjoy. Get your bellies filled, and then at 6 o'clock we have... Bible study so we can fill ourselves up on God's word. Um, and we also have Team Kid going with that. So I encourage you guys. It's one of those awesome opportunities where we're trying to provide everything to make it as easy as possible to come together, um, to be with the body, to be in God's word together. Um, and we get to fellowship together with food. So it's a great time, great time on Wednesday nights. We've got Team Kid going as well for all the young ones through sixth grade. Um, so there's something for everyone. So I encourage you, if you have Wednesday nights available, it's a great time to be together again with the body of Christ in that. Um, tomorrow night, it's our first Monday of the month, and so we have our fasting, worship, and prayer night. We encourage you guys to take tomorrow as a day to fast and worship and pray, um, to be praying um, not only for yourselves and our church, but also for our community and around the world. And then 
come here at the church at 7 o'clock and we'll have a time of coming together to fast and pray and worship. Um, it's, it's always a great time to be together praying um, for all those different things. Um, we have our senior adult luncheon coming up. That's going to be on Tuesday, October 15th. And so if you would like to sign up for that and you haven't yet, we have the sign-ups at the kiosk in the lobby there. Um, and if you have any questions, you can talk to Jean Stupansky about that, and she will be happy to answer any questions you have there. Uh, one more thing to note, um, we are going back to our normal Sunday school classes next week. We just finished up our September Sunday school s special classes today. I know it's October, but we wanted one more week. Um, so we just wrapped that up today. So uh, starting next week, we'll be back to um, Hoyt will have his uh, Sunday school class. Brandon and Jeff have their class. Um, Michelle has her class. Jeannie has her class. And I have my class as well. So if you want any uh, info on those classes, you can come talk to me and I'll get you more info on those. But next week, we'll be back to normal Sunday school. Um, that is it for announcements and things going on in the church. I'm going to have Larry come up and do our scripture reading for us this morning. If you, oh, yeah. Okay. For all women, young to old, we are having our women's, our next women's ministry event on October 26th at 10, 10 a.m. here at the church. October 26, 10 a.m. here at the church. Okay. We'll have that in the email and bulletin going out this next week, so you get all the info on that. All right. Here's Larry. Good morning. Would you stand as we uh, open our service by reading the Word of God? We're in Isaiah chapter 12. <clears throat> It's entitled, Songs of Praise for Salvation. In that day, you will sing. I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not anymore. Now you comfort me. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing. Thank the Lord. Praise his name. Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel, who lives among you. Would you bow with me as we open in prayer? Our great God and Heavenly Father, we have much to be thankful for. Father, you have blessed us so richly. First of all, with our great salvation. Lord, uh, something that we could not acquire on our own, and you have provided it for us. Father, you have continued to bless us with all the blessings and riches that we have, and Father, we thank you for that. Lord, as we gather today to praise your name, to thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, we pray that you would get a great blessing out of our praise for you. Lord, that you would enrich our hearts and cause us to praise you all week long. Father, we thank you for um, all that you do for us and all that you've given us. And we ask this all because of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We like to say dismissed. You know, they can be dismissed. We release the children. It's like release the Kraken. Watch out. Watch out, teachers. Here they come. And, uh, and we're always a family-friendly um, environment, so if your kids want to hang out with us and, uh, and learn and grow here, they can do that too. But there's certainly age-appropriate things for them as well. Well, good morning. It's good to see you. Um, we are we're going to be doing a, a prayer time together today. Um, our prayer service is one we do about quarterly. I, I sent an email out to the church 
uh, family, just letting people know. I'm trying to send one out now weekly, letting you know kind of what's going on and what to expect as we get together on a Sunday morning um, and what's, what's going to be exciting. So uh, hopefully you got that. If you didn't get an email from me or the church, it means we don't have your email address, and we'd love to have that too. You can fill out one of those green check-in cards that Alistair talked about earlier and uh, hand it in or place it in the offering box on either side of the sound booth, and we'll make sure we get your email and send you updates from the church uh, and what's going on. Um, so today is our quarterly uh, prayer service, and so we're going to take some time to pray. And, and really, uh, a couple things I always tell people as we come to one of these, um, you do not have to pray out loud in front of somebody today. Can I get an amen? I know you're like, oh, I didn't, okay, now I don't have to do that. But I, I want somebody to. Somebody's going to, right? Um, so if you feel led as we are in these different aspects of prayer um, for different things going on in our world, in our country, in our church, we, we want you to be able to, just, to pray. Pray something from your heart to Jesus as the body of Christ. Um, I was reminded uh, by one of our, our church members earlier um, gave me this passage of Scripture, which is a, a famous passage of Scripture regarding prayer, but it is necessary to remember as the body of Christ. It's from Second Chronicles chapter 7. It says this in verse 14. If my people... That's us, right? My people uh, who bear my name, God says, would, if they'd humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. I, I love the next verse. My eyes will now be open and my eyes attentive to prayer from this place. God has set up places and times with his people when they gather where he's attentive and he sees and he is, he's ready to hear our prayer. So uh, our hope and our goal is to let those pray, the, not only praise, but prayer go up to the Lord as well today. So uh, we'll start a little bit from the scriptures. If you would like to turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> we'll kind of stick there for most of the time. There'll be other verses involved. And, and there are sermon notes. You can check those out later to see all of the texts that we use. But Ephesians chapter 3 is where we'll be primarily today as it prompts us to pray. In our first section of prayer as we gather today, uh, the goal is to pray for the city, country, and world. And so as we pray for the city, country, and world, there's a lot of needs within that, right? There's a lot of ways that we can pray and be in prayer about that. Um, and so, and, and we're going to see prompts on the, on the screens behind us uh, as we go into those sections. And I'm, I'm just going to We'll start it in a few minutes, and I'll, I'll ask, hey, would someone pray for this? And, and as many people as want to can pray for this, or something that, 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 that stirs in their heart regarding our city, our, or maybe even our, our, the body of Christ, the fellowship we have here, would be a great opportunity. So uh, if, you, if you're with me there in Ephesians chapter uh, 3, Paul says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he might grant you, according to the riches of his glory— to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. But this is an important aspect of prayer as we come and we kneel humbly before the Father, and we recognize that, that this is not just about me or just about us. This goes way beyond that. It's, it's about um, every family in heaven and on earth uh, by which is named under Christ. So uh, this, this goes everywhere. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know if you're aware of this, tomorrow is October 7th. It's the one-year anniversary of, of, the, of the turmoil that started in the Middle East when Hezbollah attacked Israel last October 7th. Now, that, that wasn't a first, was it? This wasn't the first time that craziness has ensued in the Middle East, and, and it is escalating and probably has escalated almost every day since then. And we have nations all throughout the Middle East who are at war with one another. And we hear, we pray for Israel, pray for Israel. Yes, we pray for Israel, but we should pray for Iran. We should pray for Jordan. We should pray for Egypt. We should pray for all of the countries in that area. And, and here's what's beautiful and what I've heard and seen over this last year is there's a remnant of God's people that exist in all of those countries. That God's people are there and that there are Christians in Gaza. There are Christians in Iran. There are Christians in Jordan, in Lebanon. There are Christians in Egypt. There are Christians there. And what do we do? We pray for them. There are Christians even in Israel, right? And, and so when we look at praying for the Middle East, we look at praying for Israel, and we'll pray for peace. I think sometimes we get a wrong idea of prayer for peace. We think, stop fighting. Let's, let's stop fighting. That's the peace we need. No, the peace that we need only comes through the Prince of Peace, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we pray for peace, we are praying that the Prince of Peace would come to be seen and known 
and, and humbled before and, and obeyed by all nations everywhere. And we know that one day every knee will bow in heaven and earth and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. We pray for that today. Because what will actually bring lasting peace is only hope and faith and obedience to Christ. We can put a band-aid on it and say cease fire and stop. But guess what? It will start again. Only the peace of the Prince of Peace will do. Uh, Jeremiah 29, I'm going to read a few verses out of this as we begin our time in prayer in a moment. Uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 7 says this, uh, Pursue the well-being of the city that I've deported you to. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, for when it thrives, you will thrive. But Jeremiah, he knows as the Lord speaks that there's, his people are are all throughout the world, outside of Israel, outside of Jerusalem. They've been taken into exile because of their rebellion and in discipline of the Lord. But he says, while you're there, thrive where you are. Be obedient to me and thrive and pray, on the, pray to the Lord on the, on the behalf of the city that you live. Listen, that needs to be us as well. Whether it's Mount Shasta or Dunsmore, McLeod, Lake Shastino, Arica, Bead, another place around that you're from, right? Praying for the, the benefit of the city, but on your behalf, you're there. We're praying on your behalf for the Christians there. But the same is true in the underground church and the, and the overground church all throughout the world, that we would be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are displaced in everywhere throughout the world and in every city. That the name of Jesus will be lifted high there. He was on, for this is what the Lord of armies says, the God of Israel, don't let your prophets who are among you and your diviners deceive you. Don't listen to the dreams you elicit from them, uh, for, they, for they are prophesying falsely in my name. I, I have not sent them. This is the Lord's declaration. So as we continue to pray in a moment, we're going to be praying for the remnant that exists. We're going to be praying that we would not fall into the trap of deception and lies. And then he goes on in verse, verse 11. This is the one we love. Verse 11 is, Oh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? Plans for well-being and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. And it's true. God, God has our, our benefit and our, and our good in heart and in mind, but ultimately his glory. He goes on, you will call to me and, I, and come to pray to me and I will listen. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. So there's this progression of humility. We, we pray for that remnant to speak about the Prince of, Prince of Peace. We pray that we wouldn't be taken by deception, uh, whether it's here, our children, right? And what they're learning or where they're learning it from, what the media is trying to tell us, that we would go to the Word of God for instruction and not somewhere else, and that we would earnestly, humbly seek the Lord Jesus Christ, and that the world would seek the Lord Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. So we're going to stop now, and we're going to pray for the city and our country and our world. Let's bow together in prayer. And would somebody pray to the Lord on behalf of the remnant in the city here, in our country, and in the nations of the world?
I would pray for us and the city and the country and the nations to turn from and abandon deception and things that aren't true and embrace the truth of Christ. Pray now that the nations would seek the Prince of Peace and find lasting salvation. such a national level and a worldwide level, and we know that, that the Prince of Peace can really bring peace in the hearts who humble themselves before him. So God, help us now to, to dial back and to, and to think individually, even within our own midst, in our own body. God, there are so many that, that struggle with temptation or sin. God, that struggle with fear or doubt or worry or anxiety. God, those in our midst who struggle with loss, God, ailment, chronic illness, loneliness. God, we are a people who, this side of heaven, still struggle. We've got to lift up my brothers and sisters to you. We've got to lift them up that you would be their comfort, that you would be their peace, that we as the body would surround one another with care, proper affection, that we would support and encourage and admonish. God, we, we know your, your healing is so possible. We pray for your healing on those who are ill. God, we pray for healing on those who are tempted and weak. Pray for your healing as those who are lonely or anxious or depressed. You are an amazing God. You are the great physician. You are the chief pastor of our lives, the chief, chief shepherd. So we yield to you. We ask that you would use us for the benefit of one another, for your kingdom. And God, we would be so aware of your presence. And God, we'd glean, glean strength from your word and from your spirit. And God, our love for one another and our love for you would be a great testimony. God, to our family, to our neighbors, to our city, to our country, and God, to the uttermost parts of the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well done. Good job. Our next section of prayer is uh, for our affections for one another to increase.
as a testimony. And I kind of just prayed that, but that you and I would, would spend some time in prayer. Uh, you know, we, we've preached on in the last few weeks, several weeks actually, the family of God and how it relates to one another and what its testimony should be in and how its mercy should go forward to one another, how its empathy should go towards one another. Uh, we constantly need prayer, right? To, to get rid of judgmental eyes and attitudes and, and move towards each other in love and in grace and in compassion and in graciousness in our times of need that we'd lift up and encourage and support. So that's what we do. And Paul continues that in Ephesians 3. He says in verse 17b, he says, I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the width and the height and the depth of God's love, and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge so you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Our, our lives together as the body of Christ right here, starting today and what happens this afternoon and the, all week long, what happens between us, it's a testimony of who God is, the testimony of his great love, and we should be telling the truth about that. So our prayers now are, are going to prayer, and, and uh, I, would, I would ask that this first section, it says pray silently, pray silently, a prayer of confession uh, and repentance of any bitterness, any division, any anger, resentment, unforgiveness that has hurt your relationships with one another or the reputation of our Lord. I'm going to give you a, a minute or two just to, just to confess that to the Lord and surrender those things up and let go of those things that should not be taken so, so deep of a root. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. we've confessed our inadequacies and our unloving hearts would somebody please pray that the church would have and show genuine love for one another
message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are thankful for Jesus. It is only by the grace of God that we have found forgiveness and hope and salvation. And God, as we come together as the body of Christ, we come together as a statement testifying to the power of the grace of God. God, may what we do be done in love and in response to the great love that you have shown us through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. May our unity be in Christ alone. God, may it, may it be what, what makes us move and makes us give and makes us serve, makes us speak. May it be about Jesus everywhere we go. God, help us to be firmly rooted and established in love. To comprehend with all, all of our brothers and sisters what is the length and width and height and depth of God's love. And to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge. That we would be filled with the fullness of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Back to Ephesians chapter 3. In our last section, we're going to be praying to take and declare him among the nations. And I'm going to invite uh, David Holst and Lori up again in just a moment. But uh, beginning in verse 20 of Ephesians 3, it says, Now to him, that's Jesus, to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Listen, the, the hope that we have today doesn't just stay here, right? We don't light a, light a candle and put it under a bushel. Our, our goal and desire is to make much of Christ, to see that he is known amongst us as the testimony of our love for one another, and that as we leave, it goes out into the nations. So as we give, as we pray, as we serve, as we, as we go, that we would be uh, people on mission and the generations that would come behind us would know and see Jesus and, and be, uh, have faith in him as well. I'm excited today as we uh, this last section get to talk about missions opportunities. Uh, we also see uh, after church today there are opportunities that you can be involved in and David and Laura are going to share more about that in a moment. I'm going to have them come on up um, and uh, we're going to see uh, the missions fair set up after church. You can go in there and kind of get some more uh, questions answered and see the, the ways that you and I can participate in missions, but David and Lori will talk more about that, and they'll close us up with uh, our last section in prayer. Okay. Lori's going to open up with those mission opportunities. So, 
In the fellowship hall, right after the service, you will find a number of tables, and there are six opportunities for you to go to a table and to talk with others that have participated in that or to sign up to help develop something that hasn't been developed yet. One of the first ministries that we wanted to highlight is what we've talked about before, the Belize Mission Trip, and that will be in June of 2025, and we will be going back to Banque, which is where Pastor Saul and Guadalupe and our team went um, in 2023. And so there's an opportunity <coughs> opportunity there to ask questions of those that have gone before as senders and those that have gone as travelers and if you just want more information um, you can sign up for that too and if you're all fired up and you feel like God's calling you to do that there are applications to uh, pick up there and then our next meeting for the Belize trip will be October 20th Another opportunity is to seek information about Fremont Bibles and Backpacks Ministry, and we sent a team down to Fremont to partner with the Afghan American Church in August this year, and so we um, had a whole process of that this past school year, and so if you want to know more about that, you can go to that table and find information there. And then also, because we've already practiced and done it in Fremont, we were thinking perhaps we should do one here in Mount Shasta next year. And so um, there's also an opportunity to be in developing a local Bibles and Backpack um, outreach here. So this, again, this is an opportunity in the Fellowship Hall for mission interest. So some things have been fully developed and some things are yet to be developed. So that's something that can be uh, developed next year if there's interest. Um, the next interest opportunity is what we called a couple of years ago the Headwaters Outreach idea, and that has not been developed. There's been some vision for going to the city park or up on the mountain to do some evangelism, and so that would include developing that aspect of a ministry that has not fully developed yet. Uh, perhaps some evangelism training and um, opportunities to do that more than once uh, since we have um, an oppor <coughs> opportunity in our community to reach out with the gospel. And then um, our familiar opportunities are the Harvest Festival that's coming up. And so you can go there and sign up more for that or find out more opportunities to be in leadership with that as well as Operation Christmas Child, which we've been doing all year and will be culminating in November. There's opportunities to find out more and to be more involved in the leadership with that. So those are the opportunities to come and to see where your gifts and talents and resources can be used as prayer support, as a sender, as a traveler. So join us in the Fellowship Hall later. So as we go into a time of prayer, uh, Psalm 96, one through three, uh, verse 1 through 3 says, Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wondrous works among the people. So we're going to start off by praying. Uh, and we are going to pray for us to seek, hear, and obey God's specific call on us as travelers and senders. So we're praying for us as a church. Um, where God is asking you to be. Just to clarify, th it, there is no, uh, not me. <laughs> it's how is God going to use you, whether it's with your neighbor, whether it's in this community, whether it's on one of these mission opportunities. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray. And I'll ask for someone to pray for us again to seek and hear and obey God's specific call on us as travelers and or senders.
all the necessary people and resources for fruitful ministry. And Father, I just pray we would learn just to say yes. If I could have someone pray for ministries and missionaries that we already support. As we close in prayer, the worship team can come up. Father God, and we are just um, so thankful for this time of being together, Lord. And God, you have showed us all throughout your word, God, Old Testament, New Testament, that you are a God that has a heart for the world. You are a God who has a, a heart for our neighbor, Lord. God, we think about even in the beginning of the Old Testament, Abraham was to be a blessing to all nations, Lord. And God, Jesus reached out to everyone, male, female, children, Gentiles, Jews, lepers, Lord. And, and he, our faith is an active faith, Lord. It's never a hold it inside. It's a <clears throat> take it to the rest of the world. God, we just pray that we would do that, and that we would be responsible to the many gifts you have given us. Lord, you have blessed us richly, God, with resources, with faith, with time, Lord, and we would not hold hold those into ourselves, Lord, but be generous. Father God, we thank you for this time of prayer. God, and we would look around us to the needs of others, and uh, just be thankful as we go out to the world as you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, you guys. Hey, I, I, we're going to stand and worship, and our children are going to come back in and join us, and uh, just wanted to say, I hope you were encouraged by your brothers and sisters' faith. As we come together, as we, as we pray, this is, this is not a normal service, right? But this is, this is normal. The church should be doing this, right? And we come together to pray and to lift up the name of Jesus and lift one another up. And it's so encouraging uh, for my faith to hear your faith and for probably your faith to hear my faith and vice versa. So uh, well done. I, I'm so excited to be doing this uh, more regularly than we ever have. Uh, we will be getting back into uh, a sermon series next week starting in Amos. And again, I'd encourage you after this service ends to go and Check out the ways that God might be calling you to be involved uh, in the outreach and mission of this, of this church body uh, as it pertains to the mission causes that are set up in the Fellowship Hall. So let's stand together. Let's stretch. And let's sing it out to the Lord.